Hello and welcome to another art studio vlog. So it's April here in the UK and um, the weather is still really quite nippy. Um, it's uh, It's been sort of schizophrenic today. It's been hot one minute and hailstones the next, but I've been able to watch out my studio window a nice little robin collecting leaves for his nest. So um, that's very sweet. So what I've been doing today is, um, apart from admin, I'm getting ready for three exhibitions later this year, two of which I'm actually running myself. So the first one that's coming up is um, the Society of East Anglian Watercolourists, and I've got a few paintings in that, and I'm going to be stewarding and demonstrating next week. So I need to um, I need to have something to paint while I'm in there, and I nearly always choose to demonstrate um, when I have to steward an exhibition, because often with exhibitions, it's part of the rules that you have to steward maybe for half a day or for a full day. So I'm stewarding um, two days at this exhibition, um, and I need something to paint. And the reason I choose to demonstrate is just because it gives me extra working time. I'm incredibly busy, and so I'll use that time to paint. It doesn't bother me at all that people watch me. You know, I've been teaching for years, so I'm quite used to that. However, it's really difficult. I've tried before to demonstrate and to, um, to sort of come up with a new painting, an idea, or start a drawing from scratch, and that's really hard to do when people are interrupting you. So I kind of need to have, um, you know, a photograph to work from, and I need to have something sketched out. So I've been doing that today and what I'm actually getting ready for the painting that I'm going to be doing is for um, the Sudbury Summer Art Fair. So I've been helping to run that for over 10 years and um, last year was the first year that I took it over to run it completely by myself. But of course I also want to have my own work in there and um, I'm really, really going to be busy this uh, this summer. I'm going to be up against it because I've got the art fair to run. And then two weeks later, we're having a big contemporary exhibition at the Minories, which I would also like to put my own work in. So I need to have my work um, that's going on the screen in the art fair. I need to have that done and dusted really by the end of May, which with my larger paintings, you know, they can take up to 20, 30, even 40 hours to do. So I'm going to be doing some smaller sort of pen and washes and... Um, much as I hate to uh, sell my soul to commercialism, local views, views always sell quite well. Um, so I'm going to have some little local view landscapes and little um, you know, churches and, and local landmarks. And what I'm going to be doing is doing pen and wash because pen and wash is a much, much faster medium than pure watercolour. Because with watercolour, every single um, every single part of the painting has to work. You know, if something if if the uh, the colour contrast isn't there, if the light against dark doesn't work for every single part of the painting, you literally can't see what's what. Now with uh, with with pen and ink, it's much easier, of course, because you've got the lines and then you can just chuck some paint on top. It gives you a chance as well to work much more loosely. So the first painting that I'm doing is a little painting. And I wanted to do Gainsborough's statue. So Gainsborough is um, in the centre of our town. And the reason for that is because we have um, Gainsborough's childhood home here. And it's um, an internationally famous museum. And um, we have St Peter's Church in the middle of town. And then Gainsborough's statue is right outside. And it's absolutely huge. I must be over 20 foot, you know. Just the plinth alone is, is um, way above my head. It's kind of one of those places, you know, if you're meeting someone for drinks, you don't quite know where to meet them. And, you know, you ask them to meet them in the middle of town, then everybody meets under games for statues. So it's, it's quite nice. And um, on market days, we have the market round there as well. So without any further ado, I'm going to point the camera down at the sketch that I've been doing and show you a little bit about it. So I'm just doing the sketch at the moment. And then next week, probably while I'm stewarding the East Anglian Watercolourist Exhibition, I'll be able to start adding the ink and adding the watercolour. Now here's the photo I'm working from. I'm holding it up um, in the studio because it's um, it's a rather dark photograph. It's also one that I laminated years ago so that my um, my art students could use it without splashing water on it, which is, it's not something I tend to do now because um, it does interfere with the visuals, to be honest, but it's an old photograph and um, it's, a, it's a laminated one. So um, that's the photo I'm working from. So we've got Gainsborough there. He's wearing a garland. I believe that's what they put on him on his birthday. Um, and we've got St Peter's Church. There's also, this is a view that's right in the centre of Sudbury. So Sudbury, where I live, it's known for being um, a sometime home of the artist Thomas Gainsborough. And we have Gainsborough's House, which is an internationally renowned museum of Thomas Gainsborough's work and we have Gainsborough's House Print Workshop as well, of which I am a member. If I ever had any time to do any printmaking, um, hopefully I'll have that time again soon. So I thought it would make a nice little picture. And um, here we are. I've been sketching it out. So the perspective on this is 
absolutely evil. This is um, what they would call four point perspective. So what you've got here is um, the camera angle is obviously sort of somewhere here in this direction. So not only, you know, you've got this sort of this center point here, not only do things get smaller in this direction, they also get smaller in this direction and they also get smaller upwards because we're looking up at this. So you get four point perspective. And what that means is if you look up at a tall building like this church, the sides appear to slope towards each other. Now in this picture, it just looks like it's at an angle. But if you could see the other side, what you would see is that the uh, the sides are sloping ever closer together as they go up. So this is what happens when you look up at something at a very steep angle or indeed down from the top of something, the sides would slope down towards each other which means that Gainsborough himself as well has also got perspective so that you've got, um, you know, you see a lot more of him here and then his head is quite uh, quite tiny. So, to be honest, it would have been much easier for me to trace this picture. I sometimes trace if I'm doing illustration work. Um, but the thing is, if you always trace, it doesn't really give your brain much of a, a workout and you tend to end up with an image that's rather staid as well. Now, don't be imagining that you can learn to paint without being able to draw um, I'm a big fan of being able to draw. It's really, really important. It's one of those things that you have to make yourself do. So I spent some time um, with angles and with perspective and working everything out. Um, if you want to know more about how to how to transfer a photograph across like this into a decent drawing, then I have got a video which I will try to link to at the end for you. Now you can see I sort of, I put some, I don't know if you can see, there's been some little guidelines in it here. Here we go, there's some guidelines I've been using here. So I'll put some guidelines in and then as I finish using them, I, for instance, I would put um, an angle straight across here and then I would place the bits in afterwards. Now the most difficult thing on this was this um, flipping plinth that he's on. It's, um, you know, you walk past these things. I walk past this thing in the marketplace, you know, practically every day and I don't, you know, you don't give these things a second glance until you come to draw them, which is uh, the interest of drawing, of course. So um, that was quite tricky. Uh, the church itself, of course, is tricky. You'll notice that there's uh, there's almost through this building, there's a centre line. So there's a centre line through the clock and that goes through the centre of this window, through the arch and through the window above. That's not to say that the window is even either side. It will be slightly smaller this way because it's it's going in. Um, quite hard to explain, but this isn't a video on perspective. So this is going to be a pen and wash drawing. Um, so we're going to go in with a pen. I don't like to use liner pens, so this will be using an old fashioned dip pen. And the good thing about dip pen is you can spread the ink across and, um, and form the shadows. So the idea is that it's actually a fairly quick medium that I can put the ink on fairly quickly um, and then the watercolour on top even faster. So that's where we're at at the moment. There's a lot of details still missing. I haven't bothered to um, to draw all of these um, these little flowers and things absolutely perfectly because the truth is I don't want it to be like a paint by numbers. I don't want to draw every detail in pencil and then just copy it in ink. So what I'm doing is just doing the uh, the outlines. Now, if this was a simple landscape, I might only need um, you know, two or three lines, but because this is complex, I don't want to get the perspective wrong. I need a bit more of a detailed drawing, but there are some things, for instance, look at this clock face. All I've done really is indicate roughly where the numbers go. I haven't actually put the numbers in. So if we have a look at the photograph, you know, I haven't put those numbers in because now that I've got a guideline for them, I can quite easily put those in with the ink pen. And what that will do is that will give me a much more natural and free look. And it won't look as if I was just covering over the pencil, which will eventually, of course, be rubbed out. It will look like I've just drawn it freehand in ink. So that's where I am at the moment with it. And I will be sure to do another video when I put the ink and the watercolour on. So I hope you enjoyed that little look at the underdrawing I'm doing for my next painting. Do let me know in the comments if perspective is something that uh, is your biggest nightmare. Hopefully I'll do some videos on perspective to help you. Um, I've got quite a simple way of explaining it, so I'll do some videos um, about simple buildings perspective and landscape perspective coming up in the future. And on this channel you'll also get more art vlogs like this, um, business and social media training for artists as well as watercolour techniques. So please do subscribe and you can watch another video right now.